Hi all. Nadine here. We are going to be listening to um, Paradisial. Uh, 1 to 11. There's 33 left. Uh, so I'm doing 1 to 11. And uh, of the of uh, Dante's Divine Comedy. Um, don't know what I'll be making yet. But I'll be making something because I always make something. Um, but yeah, so, hope you enjoy. I'm thinking I'm going to make a bracelet, so we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, we'll talk to you after the book. Section 68 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso, Canto One. Introduction to the Paradiso. Invocation of Apollo. Ascent through the sphere of fire. The order of the universe. The glory of him who moveth everything penetrates all the universe and shines more brightly in one part and elsewhere less. Within the heaven which most receives his light I was, and saw what he who thence descends neither knows how nor hath the power to tell. For as it draweth near to its desire our intellect so deeply sinks therein that recollection cannot follow it. As much, however, of the holy realm as in my memory I could treasure up shall now become the subject of my song. O good Apollo, for my final task make me as worthy a vessel of thy power as thou dost ask for thy dear laurel's gift. One of Parnassus's peaks hath hitherto sufficed me, but with both of them I now must start upon the course which still remains. Enter my breast and breathe thou as of old thou didst, when from the scabbard of his limbs thou drewest Marcius forth. O power divine, if thou but lend thyself to me so much, that I may show the blessed kingdom's shadow which in my mind is stamped, to thy dear tree thou'lt see me come, and crown me with the leaves my theme and thou shall cause me to deserve. So seldom, father, are there any picked to grace a Caesar's or a poet's triumph, the fault of human wills and to their shame that his Penean leaf should bring forth joy within the joyous Delphic deity, when for itself it causes one to thirst. A great flame follows from a little spark. Perhaps with better voices after me shall men so pray that Syra will reply. For mortal men the lantern of the world rises through diverse passes, but from that which with three crosses brings four rings together, it issues on a more propitious course, and in conjunction with a kinder star, and more in its own image moulds and seals the mundane wax. A pass almost like this had made it morning there and evening here. And all that hemisphere was white and black the other side, when Beatrice, I saw, turned toward her left and looking at the sun. No eagle ever gazed at it so keenly, and even as from the first a second ray is wont to come and upward start again, as would a pilgrim longing to return. Even so to her act, by mine eyes infused through my imagination, mine conformed. And on the sun I gazed beyond our wont. Much is permitted there which is not here allowed our faculties, thanks to the sight created as the human race's home. Not long did I endure it, nor so briefly as not to see it sparkle all around, as molten iron doth, when out of fire it issues boiling. Day then all at once seemed joined to day, as if the one who can had with another sun adorned the sky. With eyes fixed wholly on the eternal wheel stood Beatrice, and I on her fixed mine, from there above removed. Looking at her, I such became within as Glaucus did on tasting of the herb, which in the sea made him a fellow of the other gods. Transhumanizing could not be expressed by words, let this case, therefore, him suffice, for whom grace holds experience in reserve. If I, O love that rulest heaven, was only that part of me which thou didst last create, thou knowest that with thy light didst raise me up. When the rotation thou, by being longed for, dost make eternal, drew me to itself by harmonies distributed and tuned by thee, it seemed that so much of the sky was by the sun's flame set on fire, that rain nor river ever made so broad a lake. 
the newness of the sound and brilliant light kindled in me a wish to know their cause never with so great keenness felt when she who saw me even as i behold myself opened her mouth to calm my troubled mind ere i did mine to question and began with false imagining dost thou so dull thyself that thou perceivest not what else thou wouldst perceive if thou hadst thrown it off thou art not on earth as thou dost think thyself but lightning fleeing from its proper place ne'er ran as thou that art thereto returning if i was by her little smiled out words of my first doubt relieved within a new one was i the more ensnared i therefore said already sated i had found repose from great amazement but i wonder now how i can these light elements transcend heaving thereat a pitying sigh she turned her eyes upon me with the look a mother gives her delirious child and then began all things whate'er they be an order have among themselves and form this order is which makes the universe resemble god therein exalted creatures see the trace of that eternal worth which is the end for which the mentioned order is created within the ordered state whereof i speak all natures have their place with different lots as near to their source they are or less wherefore toward different ports they wend their way through the vast sea of being which endowed with instinct granted it to bear it on this instinct toward the moon impelleth fire this is the motive force in mortal hearts this binds together and unites the earth nor doth this bow impel those creatures only which lack intelligence but those that have intelligence and love the providence which ordereth all this with its own light air calms the heaven inside of which revolves the one that moveth with the greatest speed and thither now as to a place ordained that bowstring's power is bearing us along which to a glad mark speeds whate'er it shoots tis true that as a form is frequently discordant with the intention of an art because its matter in response is death so likewise from this natural course at times a creature turns away for power it hath though thus impelled to bend aside elsewhere as one may see fire falling from a cloud if by false pleasure drawn that primal impulse turn it aside to earth if well i judge no further shouldst thou wonder at thy rising than at a stream thou dost which to its foot down from a lofty mountain's top descends as great a marvel would it be in thee if rid of hindrance thou hadst sat thee down as rest on earth would in a living flame then toward the sky she turned her face again end of paradiso canto one section sixty nine of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso, Canto Two, The First Heaven, The Moon, Reflected Happiness, Inconstant Spirits Who Failed to Keep Their Vows. O ye, who in a little boat embarked, have, fain to listen, followed in the wake of this my ship, which singing ploughs ahead, go back to see your shores again, start not upon the ocean, for if me ye lost, ye might perhaps be left behind astray. The seas I sail were never crossed before. Minerva breathes, Apollo is my guide, and all nine muses point me out the bears. Ye other few who early raised your necks for angels' bread, on which one here on earth subsists, but with which none are ever sated, ye may well start your vessel on the deep salt sea, if in the furrow of my ship ye stay, ere smooth again the waves become those glorious ones who crossed the seas to colchis were not so much amazed as ye shall be when jason turned a ploughman they beheld the innate and ceaseless thirsting for the realm in god's own image made was bearing us as swiftly as ye see the heavens revolve on high looked beatrice and i on her and in the time perhaps an arrow takes to light and fly and from the notch be freed I saw that I had come to where a marvel turned to itself my sight. Hence she, from whom the working of my mind could not be hid, as glad as she was lovely, turned toward me, and said, Direct thy grateful mind to God, who with the first star hath united us. Me seemed as if a cloud were covering us, as luminous and dense, as hard and polished, as is a diamond smitten by the sun. 
within itself the eternal pearl received us as water though unbroken it remain receives within itself a ray of light if body i was nor can one here conceive how one dimension could endure another which needs must be if body enter body the more should we be kindled by the wish that essence to behold wherein is seen how once with god our nature was conjoined there will be seen what here we hold by faith not demonstrated but will self-known be as is the primal truth which men believe my lady i replied as best i can do i devoutly render thanks to him who from the mortal world hath severed me but tell me what this body's dark spots are which cause the folk down yonder on the earth to tell each other fables about cain she smiled a little then she said if mortal's opinion therein errs where key of sense unlocketh not surely the shafts of wonder ought not to pierce thee now for thou perceivest that short are reason's wings when following sense but tell me what thou thinkest thereof thyself and i what seems to us diverse up here is caused i think by bodies thin and dense and she thou'lt surely see that thy belief is sunk in error if but well thou heed the arguments are now opposed to it the eighth sphere shows you many shining stars which both in quality and magnitude may be observed to differ in their looks if only rarity and density caused this among them all one single virtue would more and less and equally be shared virtues that differ needs must be the fruit of formal principles and these save one would by thy way of reasoning be destroyed again if thinness caused the dusky spots which thou dost ask about this planet would in portions through its bulk its matter lack or as a body what is fat and lean distributes so would this one alternate its volumes leaves if true the former were twould in the sun's eclipses be revealed because the latter's light would then shine through as when in other thin things introduced this does not happen hence the other one must be considered now and should i chance to quash it false will thy opinion prove if therefore it be so that this thin part extends not through a limit there must be beyond which what is contrary thereto allows it not to pass the other's ray is hence reflected as color from a glass returns which back of it concealeth lead thou'lt now say that the ray seems dimmer there than in the other parts it is because from further back reflected from this retort experimenting which is wont to be the fountain of the rivers of your arts can if thou ever try it set thee free thou'lt take three mirrors two of them removed at equal distance from thee let the third placed tween them more remotely meet thine eyes then turning toward them let a lamp stand so between them as to shine upon all three and be reflected on thee from them all though the most distant light will not extend so much in quantity thou'lt see thereby how it must needs with equal brightness shine and now as at the stroke of burning rays what lies beneath the snow is wholly bared of what were previously its cold and color thee thus remaining in thine intellect will i inform with such a living light that it will quiver when thou seest it within the heaven of peace divine revolves a body subject to whose influence lies the being of whatever it contains the next which hath so many eyes distributes that being among the different essences distinguished from it and contained by it the other spheres by various differences dispose to their effects and causes those distinctions which within themselves they have these organs of the world so go their way as thou perceivest now from grade to grade that from above they take and downward act give me good heed as through this argument i seek the truth thou wishest that henceforth thou mayest know how to cross the ford alone the holy circle's influence and motion as from the blacksmith doth the hammer's art must from the blessed motors be inspired and that heaven which so many lights adorn receives its impress from the mind profound which turneth it and makes thereof a seal and as the soul which lives within your dust unfolds itself through members which are different and unto different potencies conformed so likewise multiplied among the stars doth that intelligence unfold its goodness while on its unity itself revolves each different power a different alloy makes mixed with the precious body which it quickens and with which it unites as life in you because of that glad nature whence it flows the mingled virtue through the body shines as through a living pupil joy from this comes what tween light and light a difference seems and not from rarity and density this is the formal principle which makes according to its strength things dark and bright 
End of Paradiso Canto 2「Section 70 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso, Canto Three, The First Heaven, The Moon, Reflected Happiness, Inconstant Spirits Who Failed to Keep Their Vows. That sun which erst had warmed my heart with love, by proving and refuting, had revealed to me the pleasing face of lovely truth. And I, in order to confess myself corrected and assured, lifted my head as high as utterance of assent required. But that I might behold it, there appeared a sight which to itself so closely held me, that my confession I remembered not. Even as from polished or transparent glasses, or waters clear and still, but not so deep, that wholly lost to vision is their bed, the features of our faces are returned so faintly that upon a pallid brow a pearl comes no less faintly to our eyes. Thus saw I many a face that longed to speak. I therefore ran into the fault opposed to that which kindled love tween man and fount. As soon as I became aware of them, supposing they were mirrored images, to find out whose they were I turned mine eyes, and seeing nothing back again I turned them straight on into the light of my sweet guide whose holy eyes were glowing as she smiled. Be not surprised, she said, that I should smile at what is childish in thy present thought, since on the truth it trusts not yet its foot, but, as its wont is, turneth thee in vain. Real substances are these whom thou perceivest, assigned here for a vow not wholly kept. Speak to them, then, and hear them, and believe. For from itself the true light which contents them permits them not to turn their feet away. And I addressed me to the shade which seemed most eager to converse, and I began, like one confounded by too great desire. O oh, well-created spirit, that in rays of life eternal dost that sweetness taste, which never is untasted, understood. T'will grateful be to me, if thou content me with thine own name, and thy companion's lot. Hence promptly, and with laughing eyes, she said, not otherwise doth our love lock its doors against a just desire than that love doth who wills that all his court be like himself a virgin sister was i in the world and if within itself thy mind look well my being fairer will not hide me from thee but thou wilt recognize that i'm picarda who placed here with these other blessed ones am happy in the slowest moving sphere our wishes which are only set on fire by that which is the holy spirit's pleasure rejoice in that our joy was willed by him and this allotment which appears so low is therefore given to us because our vows neglected were and not completely kept hence i to her in these your wondrous faces there shines i know not what that is divine which from your old appearance changes you hence in remembering you i was not quick but what thou now dost tell me helps me so that i more easily recall thy face but tell me ye who here so happy are are ye desirous of a higher place that ye may see more friends or make you more first with those other shades she smiled a little and then replied to me so joyously that she appeared to burn with love's first fire brother love's virtue sets our will at rest and makes us wish for only what we have, and doth not make us thirsty for aught else. If higher we desired to be, our wishes would be discordant with the will of him who here discerneth us, which, thou wilt see, can in these circles not occur, if love be necessary to existence here, and if love's nature thou consider well. Nay more, essential to this blessed life it is, that we should be within the will divine, whereby our wills become one will and so even as we are from grade to grade throughout this realm to all the realm is pleasing as to its king who in his will in wills us and his will is our peace and that the ocean is whereunto moveth all that it creates and all that nature makes clear was it then to me that everywhere in heaven is paradise and yet the grace of good supreme reigns there in many ways but as it happens that if one food sate and longing for another still remain for one we ask and one decline with thanks 
even thus with word and act did i to learn from her what was the nature of the web whose shuttle she drew not unto its end high worth and perfect life in heaven she said a lady higher up here in whose rule the robe and veil are worn that till death come both watch and sleep they may beside that spouse who every vow accepts which love conforms to that which pleases him to follow her when i was but a girl i fled the world and in her habit clothing me i promised that i would keep within her order's path thereafter men more used to ill than good out of that pleasant cloister dragged me forth and god knows what my life was after that this other splendour also which reveals itself to thee upon my right and glows with all the radiance of this sphere of ours takes to herself what of myself i say a nun she was and likewise from her head the shadow of the sacred veils was torn but when she too was brought back to the world against her wishes and against good usage she never from the heart's veil freed herself this is the splendour of the great costanza who by the second wind of suabia gave the third and final power birth she thus addressed me and thereat ave maria began to sing and singing disappeared as through deep water heavy objects do mine eyes which followed after her as far as it was possible on losing her back to the mark of greater longing turned and unto beatrice reverted wholly but she so flashed upon me as i gazed that first my sight endured it not and this the slower made me in my questioning End of Paradiso Canto Three. Section seventy one of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso Canto Four, the first heaven, the moon, reflected happiness, inconstant spirits who failed to keep their vows. A free man, tween two viands equally attractive and removed, would die of hunger before he carried either to his teeth. Thus would a lamb, between the ravenings of two fierce wolves, keep fearing each alike. Thus would a dog remain between two does. Hence, by my doubts impelled in equal measure, if I was silent I reproach me not, nor do I praise, since thus it had to be. I held my peace but my desire was painted upon my face and far more warmly thus i asked than had it been by uttered speech hence beatrice did even as daniel once when in nebuchadnezzar he appeased the wrath which had unjustly made him cruel and clearly do i see she said how both thy wishes so attract thee that thy thought is so self-bound that it is not expressed thou arguest thus if my good will endure why doth the violence of others cause the measure of my merit to be less again it gives thee cause for doubt that souls seem to return unto the stars again according to the opinion plato held these are the questions which upon thy will are thrusting equally i'll hence deal first with that one which hath most of venom for thee of all the seraphs he whom most in gods himself or moses samuel or i say whichever john thou choose or even mary have in no other heaven their seats than have those spirits which appeared to thee just now nor for there being more or fewer years but all make beautiful the highest sphere and each in different ways enjoy sweet life through feeling more and less the eternal breath they did not here reveal themselves because this special sphere had been allotted them but to express the lowest heavenly state thus must one speak to your intelligence since only from sense objects can it learn what it thereafter fits for understanding because of this the scriptures condescend to your capacity and feet and hands ascribe to god and yet mean something else and holy church in human form presents gabriel and michael to you and the other who to tobias once restored his health that which timaeus teaches of the soul is not like that which one up here beholds for as he says it so he seems to mean he says that each soul to its star returns because he thinks that it was severed thence when god granted it as form and yet his doctrine is perhaps of other guise than what his words imply and may possess a meaning which is not to be despised in case he mean that to these wheel-like spheres returns their influences praise or blame 
his bow may hit perhaps upon a truth. This principle, ill understood, once turned nigh all the world awry, so that, in naming Jove, Mercury, and Mars, it went astray. The other doubt, whereby thy mind is stirred, less venom hath, because its harmfulness could not conduct thee elsewhere from my side. That this our justice should appear to be unjust in the eyes of mortals argues faith, and not heretical depravity. But here, because your human understanding can penetrate this truth with ease, I'll now, as thou desirest, render thee content. If violence it be, when he who suffers contributes not to him who uses force, these souls were not excused because of that. For will, unless it willeth, is not quenched, but acts as nature acts in fire, though turned a thousand times aside by violence. For, whether it be bent or much or little, it yieldeth to the force, and so did these, when able to regain the holy place. For if their will had been as absolute as that which held Lorenzo on his grate, or that which to his hand made Mutius cruel, it would, as soon as freed, have urged them back along the road o'er which they once were dragged. But wills as firm as that are very rare. And by these words, if thou hast gathered them as it behooved thee to, that doubt is quashed, which often would have troubled thee again. But now athwart thine eyes another pass appears, one such that from it by thyself thou wouldst not issue, but wouldst weary first. I surely have instilled this in thy mind, that spirits who are happy could not lie, since such are always near the primal truth. Yet from Picarda thou mayst next have heard that Constance for the veil retained her love. She, therefore, seems to contradict me here. Oft hath it appeared, brother, heretofore, that, to escape from danger, one has done, against one's will, what was not right to do, as at his father's hest Alcmaeon did, who impious made himself, his mother killing, in order not to fail in piety. In such a case I'd have thee think that force mingles with will, and that they so behave that sinful actions cannot be excused. Absolute will consenteth not to wrong, but in so far consenteth as it fears, unless it yield, to be more greatly harmed. Hence, when Picarda put the matter thus, she means it of the will that's absolute, and of the other I. Hence both speak true. Such was the rippling of the holy stream, which issued from the fount whence every truth derives, and such it set both doubts at rest. O thou, beloved of the primal lover, O goddess, said I then, whose speech both warms and inundates me so, that more and more it quickens me with life, not deep enough is my love to return thee grace for grace. But let who sees and can provide for this. I well see that our mind is never sated unless it be illumined by the truth, outside of which no truth extends. Therein it rests, as doth a wild beast in its lair, as soon as it attains it, and it can attain it, else would all desires be vain. Hence, like a shoot, doubt rises at the foot of truth, and this is nature, which from height to height impels us toward the mountain's top. This biddeth me, and this assurance gives me, lady, with reverence to inquire of you about another truth that's dark to me. I wish to know if one can so content you for broken vows by means of other things, that these shall not prove light upon your scales. Then Beatrice looked at me with her eyes filled so divinely with the sparks of love, that overcome my vision turned in flight, and I with bowed eyes almost lost myself. End of Paradiso Canto Four. Section 72 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso, Canto V. The First Heaven, The Moon. The Second Heaven, Mercury. The Happiness of Beneficent Activity. Ambitious Spirits. If, in the heat of love, I flame on thee beyond the measure which is seen on earth, and vanquish thus the power of thine eyes, wonder thou not thereat, for this proceeds from perfect sight which, as it sees, directs its feet to penetrate the good perceived. I clearly see that in thine intellect the light eternal is already shining, which, if but seen, always enkindles love, and if aught else seduce the love of men, tis nothing but some vestige of that light which there, ill-recognized, is shining through. Thou now wouldst know if for an unkept vow one could with other service pay enough against prosecution to ensure the soul. T'was thus that Beatrice began this canto, and even as one who cuts not short his speech, her holy argument continued thus. 
the greatest gift which, of his bounty, God bestowed when he created, and the nearest like his own goodness, and the one most prized by him, was the freedom of the will, wherewith all creatures with intelligence, and they alone, both were and are endowed. Now, if from this thou argue, thou'lt perceive a vow's high value, if so made it be, that God gives his consent when thou givest thine. For when this pact is closed between God and man, a sacrifice is made of this great treasure whereof I speak, and made by its own act. What then in comparison can be given? In thinking thou canst use thine offering well, good wouldst thou do with wrongly gotten gain. On the chief question thou art now informed, but since in this thing holy church exempts, which seems against the truth I showed to thee, a little longer must thou sit at table, because the solid food which thou hast taken requires for thy digestion further help. Open thy mind to what I now reveal, and fix it therewithin, for having heard without retaining doth knowledge make. In the essence of this sacrifice two things combine, one that whereof the sacrifice is made, the other is the pact itself. This last can never cancelled be, except by being kept, and very definite concerning this is what was said above. The Hebrews, therefore, were alone compelled to make an offering, though their offer might in some events be changed, as thou must know. The other, which thou knowest as its matter, may well be such that there will be no sin if for some other matter to be changed. But at his own free will let no one shift the burden he has placed upon his back, unless the white and yellow keys are turned, and let him deem all permutations foolish, unless the thing abandoned be contained in that which is assumed as four and six. Whatever, then, weighs by its worth so much that it can cause all scales to tip, cannot, by any other spending, be made good. Let mortals not act lightly by their vows, be faithful, and in this thing be not thoughtless, as Jephthah was, when offering up the first who should have said, I wrongly did, then keep his vow, and so do worse. And thou mayst deem as impious that great leader of the Greeks, because of whom Iphigenia mourned for her fair face, and for herself made fools and wise men weep, who heard of such a right. Ye Christians, be more serious when ye act. Be not like feathers in all winds, nor think that any water will avail to cleanse you. Ye have the testaments, both old and new, to guide you, and the shepherd of the church. Let this for your salvation be enough. If evil greed should teach you otherwise, be men, and not like undiscerning sheep, that in your midst no Jew may laugh at you, nor do as doth a little lamb that leaves its mother's milk and like a wanton fool against itself for its own pleasure fights. Thus Beatrice to me, even as I write, then full of eagerness she turned in that direction where the world is most alive. Her silence and her change of countenance silence imposed upon my eager mind, which had ahead of it new questions now. Then as an arrow doth which strikes the mark before the bowstring is at rest, even so did we speed on into the second realm. So joyous did I see my lady there, as into that heaven's light she entered, that because of it the planet brighter grew. And if the star was changed and smiled, what then did I become, who by my very nature in all ways am susceptible of change? As in a fish-pond which is still and clear, the fish draw near to that which from without so cometh that they take it for their food, I thus saw far more than a thousand splendours approaching us, and there was heard in each, Lo, here is one who shall increase our loves. And as each one came up to me, the shade was seen replete with joy within the bright effulgence issuing from its midst. Think, reader, if what here is entered on should not proceed, how full of pain would be thy craving to know more, and by thyself thou'lt see how great was my desire to hear from these about the state of their existence, as soon as to mine eyes they were revealed. O well-born spirit, to whom grace permits to see the thrones of heaven's eternal triumph ere thy life militant be left behind. We, by the light throughout all heaven diffused, are kindled. Hence wouldst thou inform thyself respecting us, be sated at thy will. Thus was it said to me by one of those kind spirits, and by Beatrice. Speak, speak, with freedom, and, as thou wouldst gods, believe. I clearly see how thou in thine own light dost nest thyself, and from thine own eyes dost flash it, they beam so radiantly when thou dost smile. 
but who thou art i know not nor why thou deserving soul hast that sphere's grade which veils itself from mortals with another's rays thus i when i had turned me toward the light which had addressed me first far brighter then it made itself than it had been before as doth the sun which by exceeding splendour itself conceals itself when e'er its heat has gnawed away the tempering of dense mists so by increase of joy that holy form in its own radiance hid itself from me and wholly thus wrapped up in such a way replied to me as sings the following song end of paradiso canto five Section 73 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso, Canto VI. The Second Heaven. Mercury. The Happiness of Beneficent Activity. Ambitious Spirits. When Constantine had turned the eagle back, counter the course of heaven its flight pursued, behind the ancient who Lavinia wedded, a hundred and a hundred years and more, the bird of God on Europe's verge abode, hard by the mountains whence it issued first, and neath the shadow of its sacred plumes it governed there the world from hand to hand, and, changing thus, reached mine. Caesar I was, and am Justinian. He who by the will of that first love which now I feel, withdrew the useless and excessive from the laws. And I, before attending to this work, believed that Christ one only nature had, not more, and was with such a faith content. But blessed Agapetus, who was then the highest shepherd, set me by his words upon the pathway of the genuine faith. Him I believed, and what was in his faith I now see clearly, even as thou dost see, that contradictions are both false and true. As soon as with the church I moved my feet, God, of his grace, with that great task was pleased to inspire me, and thereto I gave me wholly. War to my Belisarius I entrusted, to whom heaven's right hand was so well conjoined, it seemed a sign that from it I should rest. Here, then, to thy first question ends my answer. Its nature, though, constrains me to go on with something more, that thou mayst see how rightly against the holy standard moves both who appropriates and who opposes it. See what great virtue caused it to deserve respect, for from that moment it began, when Pallas died to give it sovereignty. Thou knowest that in Alba it sojourned three hundred years and more, till finally three against three fought for its sake again. Thou knowest, too, what from the Sabines wrong, through seven kings, till Lucretia's grief, it did, conquering the neighbouring peoples all around. Thou knowest what it did, against Brennus born, and Pyrrhus, and against the other kings and self-ruled states, by Rome's elect, whereby Torquatus, Quinctius for his unkempt locks surnamed, the Decii and Fabii, acquired the fame which gladly I embalm. It brought the pride of those Arabians low, who traversed, in the wake of Hannibal, those alpine rocks, whence thou, Po, glidest down. Scipio and Pompey triumphed under it when young, and bitter to that hill it seemed, beneath which thou wast born. Then, near the time when willed it was by heaven, that all the world should be reduced to its own peaceful state. Caesar assumes it at the hest of Rome. And that which from the Var unto the Rhine it did, the sown is air and sane perceived, and every valley whence the Rhone is filled, what next it did, when, issuing from Ravenna, it leaped the Rubicon, 
was such a flight that neither tongue nor pen could follow it. Towards Spain it wheeled its host around, then turned Durazzo ward, and smote Farsalia so that to the torrid Nile the pain was felt. And Tandros and the Simois, whence it started, it saw again, and there where Hector lies. Then, ill for Ptolemy, it roused itself. Thence, with the speed of lightning, it swooped down on Juba. Toward your west it next turned back, for there it heard Pompeian trumpets blow. For what it did with its next standard bearer, Brutus, and Cassius with him barks in hell. Modena and Perugia too it grieved, sad Cleopatra who, before it fleeing, took from the asp the dark and sudden death, is weeping still for what with him it did. With him it reached the distant Red Sea's shore, with him it brought the world to such a state of peace that Genus had his temple closed, but what the sign which causes me to speak had done before and after was to do throughout the mortal world which owns its sway comes to seem small and dark if in the hand of its third caesar it be looked upon with clearly seeing eyes and spirit pure because the living justice which inspires me granted that sign when in the latter's hand the glory of carrying out its wrath's revenge. Now wonder here at what I further tell thee. When this was done, with Titus it ran on to avenge the avenging of the ancient sin, and later, when the tooth of Lombardy the holy church had bitten, Charles the Great came to her help by conquering neath its wings. Thou now canst judge of those I charged above, and of their sins, which all your woes produced. Against the public standard, one sets up the yellow fleur-de-lis, while yet another appropriates it to a party's use. Hence hard it is to see which sinneth most. Let then the gibberlines their tricks perform under some other sign, for this one he e'er follows ill, who it from justice parts nor let this new Charles smite it with his Guelphs, but let him rather fear the taloned claws which from a greater lion once stripped off his hide. Often have sons ere now bewailed their father's guilt. Hence let none think that God will for his lilies change his coat of arms. This little star of ours adorns itself with those good spirits who have active been that fame and honour might live after them, and when, thus deviating, one's desires tend thitherward, the rays of true love needs must upward mount with less intensity. But in the balancing of our rewards with our deserts, part of our joy consists, because we see them as nor more nor less. Hereby the living justice sweetens so our love in us, that it can never more be turned aside to any kind of wrong. Voices that differ make on earth sweet music. So in this life of ours its different grades produce sweet harmony among these spheres. And in the present pearl there shines the light of Romeo, he whose beautiful and great performance was ungratefully repaid. And yet the Provençals who against him worked laugh not. He, therefore, takes an evil path, who to his harm another's good deeds turns. Four daughters, and each one of them a queen, had Raymond Berenger, and, though low-born and alien, Romeo twas did this for him. Then slandering words led Raymond to demand a reckoning of this upright man, who five and seven had rendered him for every ten. Thereat, though poor and old, he went his way. And if the world but knew the heart he had, while crust by crust he begged his livelihood, much as it praises, it would praise him more. End of Paradiso Canto Six.
Section 74 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso, Canto 7. The Second Heaven. Mercury. The Happiness of Beneficent Activity. Ambitious Spirits. Hosanna, O thou holy God of hosts, that with thy clarity dost brighter make the happy fires of these celestial realms. As thus to his own song he turned himself, by me that substance was seen singing now, o'er which a double light two folds itself. And to their dance both that one and the rest addressed themselves, and then like swiftest sparks, with sudden distance veiled themselves from me. In doubt I was, and to myself kept saying, Tell, tell it to her, tell, I said, my lady who with her sweet distilling slakes my thirst. That reverence, though, which masters all of me by the mere syllables of Be and Ice, bowed me like one that's overcome by sleep. A short while Beatrice endured me thus, then lighting up my face with such a smile as even in fire would bless one, she began, As I am unmistakably aware, how a just vengeance could have been avenged with justice hath occasioned thee to doubt. But I shall quickly liberate thy mind. Hence listen, for my words will now bestow on thee the present of a mighty truth. By not accepting for the power that wills a helpful curb, the man who was not born, damning himself, damned all his progeny. Wherefore the human race lay sick below in serious sin for many centuries, until the word of God was pleased to send to where the nature, which had wandered far from its creator, to his self he joined, by the mere act of his eternal love. Now turn thy sight to what is argued now. This nature, thus united to its maker, was, as when first created, pure and good, but through its own fault was in banishment exiled from paradise, because it turned out of the path of truth and its own life. As to the suffering, therefore, which the cross afforded, none so justly ever bit, if measured by the nature thus assumed, and likewise none was ever so unjust, considering who the person was that suffered, within whom such a nature was conjoined. From one act, therefore, issued things diverse. For one same death pleased both the Jews and God. It caused the earth to quake, and opened heaven. No longer strange should it appear to thee henceforth, when it is said that a just revenge was by a just court afterward avenged. But I perceive that now, from thought to thought, thy mind is in a knot tied up, from which with great desire it seeks to free itself. Thou sayest, what I hear I clearly see but from me hidden is why God should will for our redemption just this way alone. Buried, my brother, lieth this decree from all men's eyesight, whose intelligence hath not in love's flame reached maturity. However, inasmuch as on this mark great is the gazing, and but little seen, I'll say why this one was the worthiest way. Goodness divine, which spurneth from itself all envy, burning in itself so sparkles that its eternal beauties it displays. Whatever from it is immediately distilled hath afterward no end, for when it sets its seal, its stamp is not removed. Whatever from it is immediately rained down is wholly free, for that lies not under the power of secondary things, since most like it it gives it greatest pleasure, because the holy fire which lighteth all things is brightest in what most resembles it. The human creature is by all these things advantaged. Hence, if one of them be lacking, it needs must fall from its nobility. Nothing but sin deprives it of its freedom, and maketh it unlike the highest good. Hence little is it whitened by its light, and to its dignity it ne'er returns. Unless, where sin has emptied, it fill up for evil pleasures, with just penalties. When in its seed your nature wholly sinned, it was of all these dignities deprived, as well as banished far from paradise. Nor could they be regained by any path, if with due subtlety thou pay attention, except by crossing one of these two fords either that of his courtesy alone God should forgive it, or that by itself mankind should for its folly make amends. Fixed as attentively upon my words as thou art able, thrust now thine eye within the eternal counsel's deep abyss. Since finite man could never make amends, because unable in humility by new obedience to descend as far as disobeying he had meant to mount, in this the reason is why man was barred from making satisfaction by himself. It hence behooved that God, by his own ways, should reinstate man in his perfect life. By one, I mean, or else by both at once. But since so much more grateful is the work a workman does, the more it represents the goodness of the heart from which it comes, goodness divine, which on the world imprints its seal, was pleased to move by all its paths to raise you up again. 
nor hath there been nor will there ever be by either way between the first of days and the last of nights so high and so magnificent a plan for god was far more bountiful in giving himself to make man fit to raise himself than had he only of himself forgiven therefore all other means had fallen short of justice if the son of god had not humbled himself incarnate to become but wholly to fulfil thine every wish i'll now go back to clarify one point that thou mayst see as plainly there as i thou sayest i see that water nay i see that fire and air and earth and all their mixtures become corrupt and but a little while endure and yet created things were these if therefore what said above were true safe from corruption ought these things to be the angels brother and the perfect world in which thou now art may be called created such as they are in their perfected state the elements however thou hast named and those things which by means of them are made by a created virtue are informed created was the matter which they have created was the informing influence and in all these stars which round about them move the rays and motion of the holy lights draw from pure matters potentiality the soul of every brute and every plant but without agency doth kindliness supreme breathe your life forth and with itself enamours it so greatly that thereafter it always longs for it and furthermore thou canst from this infer your resurrection if thou recall how human flesh was made when both of man's first parents were created end of paradiso canto seven Section 75 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso, Canto 8. The Third Heaven. Venus. The Happiness of Love. The Spirits of Lovers. The world was at its peril wont to think that in the third of epicycles circling, fair Cypria beamed her sensual love abroad. The ancient peoples, therefore, in their ancient error, with sacrifice and votive cry, honoured not her alone, but with Dione, Cupid as well, the former as her mother, the latter as her son, and used to say that he had sat of old in Dido's lap, and took from her, from whom I here begin, the name-word of the star at which the sun looks fondly, now behind, and now in front. Of our ascending to it I was not aware but that we in it were my lady whom grown more fair i saw assured me fully and then as in a flame a spark is seen and as within a voice a voice is heard when one remains and the other goes and comes so i in that light other lamps beheld whirling with greater speed or less i think according to each lamp's eternal vision out of cold clouds there ne'er descended winds or visible or not so swiftly moving that they would not appear restrained and slow to one who had perceived those lights divine draw near to us when they had ceased the circling among the exalted seraphs first begun and in the foremost to appear resounded so that i have never since lacked the desire of hearing it again one then drew nearer to us and alone began we all are ready at thy pleasure that thou mayst have thy joy of all of us in one ring with one circling and one first we with the heavenly principalities revolt to whom once from the world thou saidst ye who the third heaven by your knowledge move and we're so full of love that thee to please a little quiet will not seem less sweet after mine eyes had toward my lady turned with reverent questioning and she herself had with herself contented and assured them back toward the light they turned which of itself had made such promise and who are ye say was what i voiced with great affection toned and how much greater did i see it grow in size and quality with that new joy which when i spoke was added to its joys grown thus it said to me the world below had me not long but had it done so longer much evil that will be would not have been the gladness which around me radiates and like a creature by its own silk swathed conceals me here now keeps me hidden from thee much didst thou love me and good cause hadst thou therefore since had i been on earth much more would i have shown thee than the leaves of love that left-hand bank which by the rhone is washed just after it is mingled with the sorg 
looked in due time to have me as its lord, as did the Alsonian horn, which is with Bari, Gaeta, and Crotona towned, and whence the Tronto and Verde bore into the sea. Upon my brow already blazed the crown of that land which the Danube irrigates, when it abandons its Germanic banks, and fair Trinacria, which grows dark with smoke, between Pacinus's and Pelorus's capes, over the gulf which Erus vexes most, not through Tifoius, but through nascent sulphur, would still be waiting for its kings, through me from Charles and Rudolph sprung, had not ill rule, which always angers subject peoples, stirred Palermo to the point of shouting, Die! And did my brother but foresee this now, the greedy poverty would he avoid of Catalonia, that it harm him not. For verily provision must be made by him or by another, that no load be further laid upon his burden's bark. His nature, which descended mean from one which liberal was, would such retainers need, as would not care to fill their coffers up. Since I, my lord, believe the joy profound thy speech infuses in me is by thee perceived, where every good thing both begins and ends, as I perceive it, all the more grateful it is. And I am also glad that this thou seest by looking up at God. As thou hast made me happy, make it clear, for thou hast moved me by thy words to doubt, how out of sweet seed bitter seed can spring. This I to him, and he, if I can show a truth to thee, to that which thou dost ask, thou'lt hold thy face, as thou dost know thy back. The good which turns and sateth all the realm through which thou mountest, makes his providence a power within these mighty bodies here. And not alone are natures in that mind foreseen, which of its own self perfect is, but they themselves and with them their well-being. Hence all this bow shoots forth, falls predisposed unto an end foreseen, as would an arrow aimed at its destined mark. Were this not so, the heaven through which thou now art journeying, in such a way would its effects produce, that ruins they would be, not works of art. Nor can this be, unless the intellects which move these stars are faulty, and the first, who failed to make them perfect, faulty too. Wouldst have this truth become more white for thee? And I, no, truly, for I see that nature, in what is needful, cannot get fatigued. Then he, now say, would it be worse on earth for man if he were not a citizen? Yes, I replied, nor do I here ask why. And can he be, unless men there below in different ways for different functions live? No, if thereon your teacher writeth well so far he came deducing thus then closed because of this the roots of your effects must different be hence one is solon born xerxes another and melchizedek another and another he who lost his son while flying through the air revolving nature which is a seal to mortal wax performs her function well but no distinction makes between one and any other dwelling place it hence results that Esau, in his seed, differs from Jacob, while Quirinus comes from such a common father that ascribed to Mars he is. A generated nature, unless divine foresight prevailed, would always follow along its generator's path. Now that which was behind thee is before, but that thou know that thou dost give me pleasure, I'd have a corollary mental thee. Nature, whene'er she finds a destiny discordant with her, like all other seed in soil unsuited to it, always fails. And if the world down there but set its mind upon the basal plan which nature lays and followed it, it would have its people good. But to religion ye now rest aside one that is born to gird him with a sword, and make a king of one that's fit to preach. The course ye take is, therefore, off the road. End of Paradiso Canto 8。Section 76 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso Canto 9. The Third Heaven. Venus. The Happiness of Love. The Spirits of Lovers.
after thy charles fair clements had resolved my doubts he told me of the treacheries his offspring were to undergo and said be silent now and let the years roll by hence i can only say to you that tears will justly follow on your people's wrongs and now the spirit of that holy light back to the sun which filleth it had turned as to the good which sateth everything alas ye souls deceived and impious creatures who from such goodness tear your hearts away and turn your temples unto vanity and hereupon another of those splendours in my direction came and signified by brightening outwardly its wish to please me the eyes of beatrice which as before were fixed upon me gave me full assurance of her beloved assent to my desire prithee blessed spirit satisfy my wish at once i therefore said and give me proof that what i think i can reflect in thee whereat the light which still was new to me out of its depths whence it had sung before went on like one whom doing good delights in that part of italia's evil land which tween rialto's island and the brintas and piave's fountain-heads is situated a hill ascends nor rises very high whence once a torch came down which terribly assaulted all the country round about from one same root both i and it were born cunitza called i here refulgent am because the light of the star vanquished me but gladly i forgive myself the cause of my allotment here which grieves me not which to your common people might seem strange of this dear brilliant jewel of our heaven which nearest is to me a mighty fame remains behind and ere it die away this hundredth year will yet quintupled be see whether one should excellent become so that the first may leave another life but thus the present mob the adiges and talimentos streams enclose think not nor doth it yet though scourged by wars repent but at the marsh twill happen soon that padua will change the waters which vincenza bathed because its folk were restive to their duty and where the sile and cagnano mate one lordeth it and goes with head erect for trapping whom even now the net is made feltro will yet bewail the faithlessness of its bad shepherd which will be so foul that maltra was not entered for the like too large would be the wine vat which could hold all the ferrera blood and weary one who tried to weigh it ounce by ounce which shall this courteous priest's donation be to prove his party loyalty and gifts like this will with the country's life conform mirrors there are above ye call them thrones whence on us god as judge reflects his light so that these words of ours seem good to us she here ceased speaking then intent she seemed on something else because she set herself to wheel around as previously she did the other joy already known to me as something noble in my sight became a perfect ruby smitten by the sun splendour up yonder is by joy acquired as smiles are here but down below a shade outwardly darkens when the mind grows sad god seeth all i said and thy will so in hymns itself blessed spirit that no wish can rob thee of itself therefore thy voice which with the song of those devoted fires who with their six wings make themselves a cowl is always charming heaven why gives it not contentment to my wishes i indeed would not await thy asking me if i indeed myself as thou in meest thee the greatest valley o'er which water spreads thereat his words began except the sea which forms a garland round the earth extends counter the sun so far to an alien shores that it can make meridian of a place where it is wont to make horizon first on that sea's shore i dwelt twin ebro's mouth and magris which for but a short way parts the tuscan region from the genoese with almost equal set and rise of the sun sits both bugea and the city whence i was which with its blood once warmed its port folko that people called me unto whom my name was known and this heaven is by me impressed as i was formerly by it for bellu's daughter when she troubled both sicaius and creusa burned no more than i as long as it beseemed my hair nor did that rhodopean maid 
whose love Demophon deceived. Nor yet Alcides, while in his heart he kept Iole locked. Yet we are not repenting here, but smiling, not for the sin, which to our minds returns not, but for the worth which ordered and foresaw. Here at the art we gaze which beautifies so great at work, and only see the goodness whereby the world above turns that below. But so thou they mayst bear away with thee, thy wishes all fulfilled, which in this fair were born, still further must I needs proceed. Who is within this light thou fain wouldst know, which right here at my very side is sparkling, as rays of sunlight shine in limpid water? No, then, that Rahab finds her rest therein, and to our order being joined, with her it stamps itself in a supreme degree. By this heaven, where the shadow your world makes ends in a point, before all other souls was she received, that triumph with the Christ. It well behooved to leave her in some heaven, to be a poem of that great victory, which by both hands was won, because she favoured Joshua's first glory in the Holy Land, which little stirs the memory of the Pope. Thy town, which is a plant once sowed by him, who first against his maker turned his back, and through whose envy many tears are shed, brings forth and spreads abroad the cursed flower which, having of the shepherd made a wolf, hath caused both sheep and lamb to go astray. The Gospels and great doctors are for this despised, and only the decretals conned, as is apparent by their margins state. On this are Pope and Cardinal's intent, their thoughts turn not toward Nazareth, where Gabriel once oped his wings, but both the Vatican and all the other chosen parts of Rome, of old the burial place of militia, which followed in the path which Peter trod, will soon be freed from this adultery. End of Paradiso Canto 9、Section、seventy seven of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso Canto X, the Fourth Heaven, the Sun, Intellectual Happiness, the Spirits of Theologians and Philosophers. Looking upon his son with all the love which both of them eternally breathe forth, the primal and unutterable power with so great order made whate'er revolves through mind or space, that none who look at it can ever be without a taste of him. Lift, therefore, reader, to the heavenly wheels thine eyes with me, directly to the region where one of their two motions strikes the other. And there begin to contemplate with love that master's art who in himself so loves it that never doth his eye abandon it. And now see how from thence the oblique ring, which bears the planets with it, branches off to please the world which calls upon them. How, in case their path were not thus bent aside, in vain would be much virtue in the heavens, and dead well nigh all potencies down here. And how, if from the straight line more or less removed, it swerved, much in the mundane order would lacking be below and up above. Now, reader, on thy bench remain, and what is here foretasted follow out in thought, if thou, ere weary, wouldst be very glad. Food have I set before thee, feed thou now thyself, because the theme, whose scribe I m made, unto itself is resting all my care. The greatest of the ministers of nature, which with the power of heaven imprints the world, and with its light measures our time for us, joined with the section touched upon above, was circling now around the spiral rings, wherein it earlier shows itself each day. And I was in it, but was not aware of my ascent, except as one before a thought has come is conscious of its coming. It is Beatrice, who thus from good to better conducts one with such swiftness that her act extendeth not through time. In its own self, how bright must that have been, which in the sun, which I had entered, was not visible by colour, but by light. Though I on genius, practice, and art should call, I could not so describe it that it e'er could be imagined. But it can be believed, and sight of it should be desired. And for such heights, if low be our imagination, is no wonder, for no eye ever reached beyond the sun. Such the fourth family here of that exalted father, who ever states it by revealing how he breathes forth and how he generates. 
and beatrice began give thanks give thanks unto the angel's son who of his grace hath raised thee up to this material one no mortal heart was ever so disposed to be devoted and with all its pleasure give itself up to god as i became at those last words of hers hence all my love set itself so on him that beatrice in my forgetting mind became eclipsed and she disliked it not but smiled at it so that the splendour of her laughing eyes shared with more things my undivided mind i many keen and dazzling splendours saw who sweeter voiced than in appearance bright made us a centre and themselves a crown latona's daughter we behold at times thus girded when so pregnant is the air that it retains the thread that forms her zone within the court of heaven whence i return are many jewels found so fair and precious that from the kingdom they may not be moved and of these was the singing of those lights let him who doth not feather him to fly up there await the dumb for news from thence and then when singing thus those burning suns had all around us whirled themselves three times like stars that near unmoving poles revolve ladies they seem to me who though not through with dancing yet in silence stop a while and list till they have caught the music's coming notes in one i heard beginning since the ray of grace whereby true love is set on fire and afterward by dint of loving grows and multiplies is shining in thee so that it conducts thee upward o'er the stairs which none without remounting e'er descends he who thy thirst the wine within his flask refused would be no more at liberty than water is which falls not to the sea thou fain wouldst know what blooms this wreath in flowers itself withal which circling round her woos the lady fair who makes thee strong for heaven one of that holy flock's young lambs was i which dominic leads along the path whereon one thriveth well if one go not astray the nearest on my right here was my brother and teacher he was albert of cologne and thomas of aquina my if thus of all the other lights thou wouldst be sure follow behind my speaking with thy face revolving upward round the blessed wreath that other flaming issues from the smile of gratian who to both the courts of law was such a help that paradise is pleased the next who at his side adorns our choir that peter was who like the needy widow offered his treasure up to holy church the fifth light which is fairest in our midst is with such love inspired that all the world down there is hungry to have news of it in it is that great mind wherein was placed wisdom so deep that if the truth be true no second hath arisen to see so much see next to it that candle's light which saw most inwardly when in the flesh below the angel's nature and their ministry in the next little light that advocate of christian times is smiling of whose work in latin augustine availed himself if now thy mind's eye thou art moving on from light to light behind my words of praise thou now remainest thirsting for the eighth because it sees all good things there within that holy soul rejoices which reveals the cheating world to one who hears him well down yonder in shildaro lies the body from which this soul was driven and to this peace from martyrdom and banishment it came flaming beyond it see the burning breath of isidore of bede and of ricardo who was in speculation more than man and this from whom thy glance returns to me the light is of a spirit unto whom in deep thoughts lost it seemed that death came slowly this is the light eternal of sigeri who when he lectured in the street of straw 
proved by his syllogisms displeasing truths then like a clock which calls us at the hour at which the bride of god awakes to sing her spouse a morning song and win his love and as one part or draws or drives the other and sounds ting ting with such delightful notes that spirits well disposed are filled with love even so i saw that glorious circle move and fuse its voices in a harmony and with a sweetness which can not be known except where joy is self-externalized end of paradiso canto ten section seventy eight of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this the brevox recording is in the public domain paradiso canto eleven the fourth heaven the sun intellectual happiness the spirits of theologians and philosophers st francis o foolish care of mortal men how full of fallacies the syllogisms which cause thee over another course to beat thy wings one given to legal learning went his way one medicine the priesthood one pursued and lordship one by force or sophistry one practised theft and public business one one in the pleasures of the flesh involved was growing weary one to idleness and ease was giving up his life while i from all these things set free was up in heaven with beatrice so gloriously received when each had to the point returned again where in the ring he was before he stayed there still as a candle in a candlestick and i within the light which had before addressed me heard one smilingly begin as more and more resplendent it became as with its radiance i am shining here so i by gazing at the eternal light learn whence thou takest occasion for thy thoughts in doubt thou wouldst that i repeat in words so clear and so distinct that they will suit thine understanding that late speech of mine wherein i said whereon one thriveth well and where i said no second hath arisen for clearly must one needs distinguish here the providence which with that counsel rules the world whereby before it reach the bottom every created sight is overcome in order that the bride of him who cried aloud and spoused her with his blessed blood might go toward her delight safe in herself and unto him more faithful too ordained in her behalf two princes who should serve as guides to her on this side and on that one in his burning love was all seraphic the other by his wisdom was on earth a splendour of cherubic light i'll speak of one of them for both are spoken of when one is praised whichever one be taken for to the same end were the deeds of both between tupino and the stream that flows adown the hill which blessed ubaldo chose a lofty mountain's fertile slope impends from which perusia feels at portesole both cold and heat while for their heavy yoke behind it guardo and noshera weep out of this hillside where it breaketh most its steepness to the world a son was born as out of ganges this one is at times therefore let him who talks about that place not say ashese which were not enough but orient say if he would rightly speak not distant from his rising was he yet when he began to cause the world to feel somewhat encouraged by his wondrous virtue for still a youth he strove against his father for such a lady's sake that unto her as unto death none open pleasure's door and then before his church's legal court and in his father's presence joined himself to her and ever after day by day loved her the more intensely she bereft of her first husband slighted and scorned remained unwooed eleven hundred years and more till that one came nor aught avail to hear 
that he, whom all the world was fearing, found her undaunted, with Amiclus by his voice, nor aught her being so unmoved and firm, that even when Mary stayed beneath it, she went up with Christ upon the cross. But now, lest in my long talk I proceed too darkly, take poverty and Francis as these lovers, their concord and their joyful countenance caused wonder, love, and gentle looks to end in others' holy thoughts, and so much so that venerable Bernard was the first to bear his feet and run behind such peace, and, running, feel that he was slow of foot. O wealth unrealized, O fertile goodness, Egidio bears his feet, Sylvester his, behind the groom, so pleasing is the bride. That father then, and master went his way, with both his lady and that family, which now was girding on the humble cord, nor let base-heartedness weigh down his brow, for being Peter Bernardone's son, nor yet for seeming so contemptible to others but revealed his stern resolve to innocent with royal dignity, and won from him his order's primal seal. When poverty's beloved followers had grown behind the man whose wondrous life would in the glory of heaven be better sung, the holy purpose of this head of flocks was through Honorius by the Holy Spirit crowned with a second crown. Thereafter, when by reason of his thirst for martyrdom, Christ and the rest, his followers, he had preached before the haughty sultan, and on finding his folk too restive to conversion, not to stay in vain, returned to pick the fruit of Latin fields, among the savage rocks which tween the Tiber and the Arno rise, he took from Christ himself the final seal which on his limbs he bore for two whole years, when him it pleased who granted him such will to draw him up to that reward which he, by making himself lowly, had deserved to his own brethren as to rightful heirs he recommended his most precious lady, and ordered them to love her faithfully. Then from her bosom his illustrious soul willed to depart, and to its realm returned, and for its body wished no other buyer. Think now what he was, who, as his companion, was worthy deemed to keep the bark of Peter true to its course when sailing on the deep. That was our patriarch. Thou hence canst see that he who follows him as he commands loadeth his vessel with good merchandise. And yet his flock, so greedy for new food, hath grown, that he can hardly fail to scatter through various wood and mountain pasture lands, and hence the more his sheep-like vagabonds wander away and further go from him, emptier of milk they regain the fold. Yet surely some there are, who, dreading harm, cling to their shepherd. But so few are these, that little cloth will furnish them with cows. If now my words have not been indistinct, and if thy hearing hath attentive been, and thou recall to mind what I have said, Partly contented will thy wishes be, because thou'lt see the plant whence hewn they are, and what the limitation means, whereon one thriveth well, if one go not astray. End of Paradiso Canto 11so that was the end of that one um we've got next time i'll probably play 12 to 22 and get that done um 
I am going to work on a bracelet, a granny square blurry bracelet. After saying in a chat that I hate sewing on sewing in ends, I make something where I got a lot of ends to sew on. You know, that's the way it is. Um, you know, inspiration comes when it comes, and you have to deal with it. Um, so yeah, I'll just. Uh, continue on this uh, next time and uh, um, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful night or day or whenever you happen to be looking at this. Bye!